Bubbles, I'm gonna find that token. Am I getting warmer? In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to get a user access token with the Facebook Graph API. By the end of this video, we're going to have ourselves a web page just like this. We're going to display out the session data, and we're going to display out a login with Facebook link if the user is not logged in. Then down here, we're going to display out exactly what that login link looks like. More on that later. If I click login with Facebook, it should take me to Facebook, and it's going to prompt me with a pop-up from our app asking us if we can continue to get the user's information. I'm going to say yes and grant access to the app. It's going to send us back to our web page and we're going to get an access token and store it in the session. As long as we have it stored in the session and I keep refreshing the page, I won't be logged out. I click log out to clear the session data and now I am logged out. Clicking log in again will automatically log me in because I already, already authorized the app. So it goes to Facebook. You don't need to click the continue button anymore. It clicks that for you since you've already authorized the app. The app sends you back to our page and the same process happens where we get an access token and we store it to our session. Before we code, you need to make sure you have a Facebook app created. Here I'm going to use my test app that I use for various tests and for Facebook login in order to get the user access token you need to make sure you've added Facebook login here. If you don't have it, click add products and add Facebook login. Then the important part is under settings. You need to scroll down here and you need to make sure that under valid OAuth redirect series you enter the URL to the page where you're going to be handling the access token. When the user is taken to Facebook to log in and they click continue, Facebook will redirect the user to this exact URL. Now you see that there's multi I have multiple URLs in here. Facebook knows exactly which one to redirect to because when you create the link that you put in that login with Facebook button, you specify the actual URL that you want the users to be sent back to. Over in my blog code folder, I'm going to create a new folder called Facebook Graph API. And we'll be using this folder for this video. Now, in case you're wondering or didn't know, this blog code folder here is a repository on GitHub. You can check out my GitHub at github.com slash jstolpe slash blog code. For this video, we're going to have three files. We're going to have our defines file, which is going to store things like our app ID, our app secret, things like that. Functions file, which is going to contain some functions that we can call, and then our actual get user access token script, which will just include these two files. So let's go ahead and open these up. We're going to be in over in our defines file by defining our app ID, our app secret. And we get those from our Facebook app dashboard. So under settings, basic, we're going to copy your app ID. We're going to paste that right in there. And we're going to do the same for our app secret. Then we're going to set up our Facebook redirect URI. This is the important part that we just went over in the Facebook dashboard. Whatever you specify in the code needs to match whatever is entered here in the app dashboard. We're going to paste that just like that. Then a few more Facebook global defines. We're going to just specify, we're going to specify the graph version, which is currently version 12.0, and the Facebook graph domain. Then over in our get user access token.php file, we include our defines file. Now that we're done with our defines file, we can move over to our functions file. The first function I'm going to place in here is going to come from our IG media, and our Instagram graph API docs IG media.php file, because it has a nice curl call already set up for us here. So we're going to go ahead and steal that and put it in our functions file. And all this does is it opens up a curl call. You can specify the endpoint, the type, like a get or a post, and any parameters that you want to pass along to that endpoint. It makes the curl call, gets the response back, and gives us a nice return array. Let's go ahead and include this functions file right after our defines file. And then we're going to do a session start. Now we have access to the PHP session variable. First check I'm going to implement is a logout function. And the way we're going to log the user out is simply by specifying the URL variable logout. So if you put logout in the URL, we're going to unset the session, and then we're just going to direct the user back to our page. Now we know the user is not logged in yet, so the first thing I'm going to do is get the Facebook login URL. I'm going to get, begin by setting our session, creating a variable here called FB state. We're just going to do a empty random on this, any number from one to a million. 
what this state does is going to append the state to the URL when we log in with Facebook. So we're sending Facebook a random number. We're directing the user to Facebook with this random number. Facebook gets that random number, and when they send the user back to our website, they're also going to send this exact same random number, and we can check those numbers. If they match up, we know they came from Facebook. We're going to create a function here, and the first parameter that's going to take in is the scope, which is basically just any permissions you want to get for that access token. Then we're going to pass in our FB state. And you see we save it to the session here because the user will be directed away from our website. So when they come back, the state will still be there. Over in our functions file, we're going to create our function, get Facebook login URL. We got our permissions and our state. First thing we need to set up is the endpoint. This is the endpoint we'll be sending the user to, which is facebook.com, the Facebook API version, dialog slash OAuth. Then we need to set up some params. For this endpoint, we have to pass along the app ID, which is passed along as the client ID, our redirect theory, the thing that we set in the dashboard and defined in our code, which have to match. We're going to pass along the state, which is that random number, so we can match up when Facebook sends the user back. The permissions, in this case, I'm specifying email and public profile, so I can get their email and their name. And then the auth type has to be set to re-request. Then we're just going to return a string, which is the endpoint, and we're going to do a build query on our param. So let's get some HTML going down here, display our login URL. Dump out our session. Then we're going to implement our if else down here, which is our logged in or not logged in. We'll check if the user is logged in. We're just going to check to see if this is set in a little bit. Uh, we'll do some more logic up here so it won't be set all the time. Then we're going to do our a tag and we're going to dump out our login URL so we can see what it created for us. In the case the user is logged in and to log them out we have to specify our URL variable log out. Then they will fall into our if up here. Let's check out our website and see where we're at. So there we go, we got our session being displayed, our FB state is there, and every time we refresh the page we should see a new random number generated. Then we have our login link here, and we're displaying it right down here. We see we have facebook.com version 12, there's our dialog OAuth, and then here's our query params we're sending along. Our app, our redirect theory, should be blog code. Oh, I need to add a new redirect theory here because I was using a different one for testing. We have our Facebook Graph API folder and our get user access token.php. You see our state, scope, and our auth type have been appended on. That is our login URL. Over in my app, I'm going to add another redirect theory. Localhost blog code. Hit enter and click save. And I've just added another valid redirect theory. Copy that. Open up my defines file and I need to remove the underscore done. Now the redirect theory is set to send the user to our repository and not the underscore done folder. Now you might be wondering what happens if we click on this login link right now. Well, let's do it. Click on login and it should take us to Facebook and ask us for our credentials. Put mine in. Click login. Oh, of course, got to do 2FA here. Put that on my phone, that's me. Now I'm prompted by our app that we created and it's asking me if it can get my email address and my name and profile picture. I'm gonna allow that and we should be taken back to our website. There we go, we're taken back to our blog code repository folder. And now you see we have a bunch of stuff up here in the URL. This code right here is what we're going to use to get an access token from Facebook. If we go all the way back here, our state should have came back with us. There is the state that we sent to Facebook. Now it does not match this current state here because on every page load we're generating a new state. So we only want to generate a new state if the user is not logged in. Otherwise they will never match. So we have some more logic to write. Back up here we're going to do an if statement around our login URL. Now we're going to check if the user is coming from Facebook and if they have an access token or not. We're first going to check for the code in the URL. Then we're going to check for the state. If the state is there, we're going to check if the state equals the session state. Now we know we have came from Facebook. The other thing we want to check here is if there is an access token saved to the session. If there is, we don't need to get another access token. And we're going to store our access token in the session and we're going to call it FB access token. Now we need to get the access token with the code provided from Facebook. We're going to write ourselves a little function, get access token with code, and pass along our get code. Then when we get the access token back, the access token response will be in the data array. So we're going to set the session FB access token to access token data. Over in our functions, we're going to create a get access token with code. There's our parameter, the code from the URL. And just like our login URL, we need to define the endpoint on Facebook we can hit to get this access token, which happens to be our Facebook graph domain with the version slash OAuth slash access token. Then we're going to specify the parameters Facebook requires for this endpoint, the client ID, 
This is where we need our app secret. Specify that as the client secret. We also need to specify our redirect URI again. And of course, we need our code. And those are the four parameters that we pass along to that endpoint. Then all we have to do is return our make Facebook API call function right here, make API call with our endpoint. This is going to be a Git request and our parameters. So our actual response will be in the data right here. That is why we're setting the session FB access token to the data from our access token. Last thing we need to do is add on an if here, and we're also going to check if this is not set. First we check to see if the user is coming from Facebook. If they are, and we don't have an access token for them, generate an access token for them. Otherwise, if we don't have an access token in the session, we want to get the login URL. If we do have an access token in the session, we don't fall in here and we don't fall in here. The user already has an access token and they're logged in. And we're going to refresh our page. And of course we have a syntax error. Line 62, it's always a missing semicolon. Now our page loads, that's a good sign. And we're gonna click Login with Facebook. We're not gonna be prompted this time, we've already authorized the app. So it's gonna to go to Facebook, it's just gonna automatically redirect us back. Click on it, it returns us back. We got an access token and we set it to our session. Refresh our page and we should still be logged in. So I'm gonna log out and our session has been unset and now we are free to log in with Facebook again. So before we wrap up this video, I'm going to show you guys how to get that pop-up to show up. Head up over to your Facebook account. Under Settings, click on the Apps and Websites. Here is all the apps that are authorized by you. So you see our test app? Authorized. It means that the pop-up won't happen unless, new permission, unless it requests new permissions. All you have to do is click Remove. Remove the app. Now when you click Log in with Facebook, it will take you to Facebook and it will make you press the Continue button because you just deauthorized that app in your settings. There we go, you see the pop-ups there, I click continue, the same thing, go back, and it's going to give me an access token. And over in my settings, I refresh, and the ECI test app should be right back. There it is. And that is going to wrap up the video for getting a user access token with the Facebook Graph API. Hit that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment down below, and let me know what you want to see coded up next. I'll catch you later.